Okay, this question states the following. What are the Miller indices of the plane which contains the points 1, 1 half O, 1, 1, 3 fourths, and 0, 1, 1 half in the cubic crystal system? Okay, so this type of question can be solved in two ways, right? The way that you would probably think to do it first is to just draw the cubic unit cell, label these points on there, draw the plane, and see where it intersects the x, y, and z axes. And then it's just like labeling Miller indices like anything else. Once you see where it intersects those planes, it's no big deal. So let's go ahead and give that a shot first. We're going to draw our cubic unit cell, right? And let's go ahead and um, select, this is our origin for now. And let's go ahead and label these points on there. So the points are at 1, 1 half, 0. So we go 1 in the x direction, right? So again, I'm going to label this as our x direction. This over here is our y direction. And up there is our z direction. So go 1 in the x direction, half in the y, and 0 in the z. That puts a point right there. And let's just label that A for a minute. We'll label that point A. B, our next point, is at 1, 1, 3 halves. So we go forward 1 in the x, forward 1 in the y, and then up 3 quarters in the z. So I'm going to label that one B. Okay. Now C, the last point, we go 0 in the x, so we don't have to come forward at all in the x direction, but we go 1 in the y and 1 half in the z. Right? And that will be point C. So let's go ahead and um, sort of draw this plane. Okay. At first glance, um, that's our plane, and it's not super easy to tell where that's going to intersect the x, y, and z axes, right? I mean, the y axis, it looks like it's intersecting it, I mean, somewhere in this region, around two thirds ish, right? It becomes a little bit tricky. Um, the x, gosh, who knows where that's going to intersect it at? Um, so, this is tricky, right? At least with our existing origin. So the two ways to solve this question, first one is not looking like it's working very well. We can make it work by selecting a different origin. That's going to make our life a lot easier. Select this as our origin for a minute and now consider this case. We have a new x, y, and z. This makes it a little bit easier. For one thing, it's easy to see that it's intersecting the z right here at 3 fourths. It's intersecting the y at negative 1 half. And the x is not quite as easy to see. Let's go ahead and write down where, where we see that it's intersecting already. The x we're not quite sure about, but the y we see and the z that we see, z is clearly it's intersecting at 3 fourths. y it's intersecting at negative 1 half, right? Negative 1 half in the y direction. And then x, it starts up here at 3 fourths. When you go forward one full unit cell in the x direction, it goes down a quarter. So now it's at 1 half. So you go another, it would be down at one quarter, and another would be down another quarter. So it technically intersects the x at negative three then, right? So that's going to intersect the x at negative three. So our next step um, with any Miller indices problem, once you figure out where it intersects the x, the y, and z, uh, we know how to finish this. We simply have to do the inverse, right? So we take the inverse. This becomes negative one-third. This becomes negative two. This becomes negative four-thirds. And then the last thing we do when we figure out the Miller indices for a plane is we turn these into integers. So let's multiply all of these by 3. Um, sorry, that is positive 4 thirds. Multiply it all by 3, and that becomes negative 1, negative 6, and 4. All right, so that would be our Miller indices for the plane that contains those points. Um, so that was a little bit tricky to, to label those, and some planes might be even harder. Uh, it might not just be super easy to figure out where it's going to intersect the x, y, and z axes, even if you move your origin. Good news is there's another way to do this, right? Here's the other way. It's called vector algebra, right? And you, you've probably seen it before. If you're taking material science and engineering now, it means you probably took um, pre-calculus at some point and you saw this. Here's the trick to it. Anytime you have a plane, let's say we have some plane that has points A, B, and C on it, well, you can figure out rays between A and B and A and C, right? Those are just lines. In, in material science, we call those directions, right? These are directions between two points. And if you take the cross product of those two points, if you take the cross product of those two points, you get one which is now perpendicular to both of them, right? And it's perpendicular to the plane that it's in, right? And what we know about crystal systems, right, in a cubic system, and cubic only is where this works, is that 
the 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 normal to this plane the vector the normal to that plane vector u v w of that normal in a cubic system that's the same as the plane you know u v w as a plane equals that in a cubic system that doesn't work in other crystal systems we'll do a video about that later but in a cubic crystal system if you know the normal to a plane that's the same as Miller indices of the plane so how do we get that normal plane we take the cross product so let's go ahead and do that for this problem the first thing we have to do is we need to figure out what are the rays between A and B and A and C well if we go back up here to go from A to B in the X direction we don't move anything at all we stay in the same plane right that point is at x equals 1 this is at x equals 1 so nothing there in the y direction though we're going to go forward one half and the z direction we're going to go up three-fourths so our our ray for a to b or the direction between point a to point b that could be written as zero one half three-fourths okay what about from a to c oh, excuse me from A to C, it's going to be a little bit different. Let's pull it up. All right, going from A to C, we go back one in the X direction. We go forward one half in the Y and up one half in the Z. So it's going to be negative one, one half, one half. Okay, we have our two vectors now. These are two directions. We could write them in the square brackets like you do in material science when you're talking about directions in a crystal cell. Um, uh, crystal structure and now we need to take the vector cross product right so if you haven't seen cross products in a while let's remind you how it works you've got component i you've got component j and you've got component k right we're going to write the zero one half and three fourths zero one half three fourths and then we've got negative one one half and one half right there when you take the cross product we're going to cover this first column up, and we're going to take one half times one half minus one half minus three fourths, right? So our i term is going to be equal to one half times one half minus one half times three fourths. Now the j term is negative. We alternate between doing positive and negatives. For the j term, we're going to cover up this column. And then we're going to take the diagonal, 0 times 1 half minus minus 1 times 3 fourths, right? So it's going to be the negative of 0 times 1 half minus minus 1, negative 1 times 3 fourths. And then the k term, we're going to cover up the k column, so this is not here, and it's going to be 0 times 1 half minus negative one times one half. So it's going to be zero times one half, subtracting minus one times one half. So when we plug all of this in, um, you can solve for i, j, and k. And when I do so, I find that i, j, and k are as follows. For i, um, I get negative one eighth, i. And then for j, I get minus three fourths j. And then for k, I get plus one half k. So that is right there. That is the vector which is normal to our plane. So if we want to turn them into Miller indices, all we have to do is multiply it by something so they're integers. So let's multiply it by eight, right? That makes this become minus one, eight times negative one eighth. This becomes minus uh, six, right? Two times three. That becomes minus six. And this one becomes positive 4. Or in other words, that's our, that's our normal to our plane. Therefore, that's the same as the plane. Minus 1, minus 6, 4. Which you'll also see written as 1 bar, 6 bar, 4. And how does that compare to what we found earlier? Minus 1, minus 6, 4. It's the exact same thing. So either approach works just fine. That's how you figure out the plane which contains three points in a cubic crystal system.